Meanwhile, Kentucky is beginning to reopen its economy today. A Democratic Governor Andy Bashir announced phase one kicks in kicks off rather this week. So here's how it's going to go. Hospitals and other health care facilities will resume somewhat normal operations with specific restrictions in place. But this comes as confirmed coronavirus cases uh, top 4,000 in Kentucky. So to talk a little bit more about this, we're going to bring in uh, Daniel Rocher. Uh, he's a political reporter for the Lexington Herald Leader. Um, why is the governor, Daniel, opening up or at least beginning to open the state up for business. What's going on here? Because the cases are continuing to rise in Kentucky, right? Yeah, so this is technically not really phase one. This is just phase one for the healthcare uh, institutions. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get healthcare back on board, just kind of in a limited way, um, in part because they're seeing a lot of really severe cases come into the ER. And so they're feeling like there needs to be some kind of services going on healthcare-wise that people start to kind of resume some of those normal operations. And so there are really tight restrictions on um, what healthcare facilities can come back. It's, it's only urgent and non-emergent healthcare facilities and diagnostic radiation. Um, and they've put in a lot of requirements there, right? So all of the staff are gonna have to wear masks, all of the patients are gonna have to wear masks. And the really big thing here is personal protective equipment. So all of these healthcare providers are going to have to have their own personal protective equipment, and they're not going to be able to dip into the state kind of pool. So unless they have enough personal protective equipment, they should not be opening back up. And they're needing some snags too, right? So like with dentists, when they go into your mouth, there's a lot of aerosols around, and they, and they have to figure out a system for dealing with that and, and getting all those restrictions in place. So it's really kind of this early, early, early phase in. Um, and not everybody's popping back open. It's it's kind of like, a, okay, you're allowed to, but you got to do it if you meet these specific requirements. So, Daniel, uh, how have people across Kentucky been reacting to the coronavirus stay-at-home orders? I mean, I know that there have been a few rallies against the restrictions, and I, it always is surprising to me that people are rallying around quote unquote reopening the economy. It's not a, the economy isn't a light switch that you just flip up and you flip down. I mean, it has to do with whether or not people, consumers in a community um, want to go shopping uh, in places other than grocery stores or pharmacies, or if people want to go back to gyms, or if people want to go back to clubs or restaurants. It doesn't matter if they're open or not, although that does restrict the amount of people that could make that decision to go to uh, one of those locations. So what can you tell us about how ordinary Kentuckians are thinking about this. Yeah, so I, I think for the most part, people are obeying and staying at home, right? When you go to the supermarket, people are wearing masks. Um, you know, you don't see that many people around. It's, it's pretty much closed. And so, yes, I covered some of those rallies. And, and really, um, it was really just one big rally, right? So there were about 100 people there. They were all on the lawn. Um, they, you know, they started off trying to socially distance, and some of them were wearing masks, but by the end, they were all just kind of crowded together as a man blew a shofar. Um, and it was this, you know, it was a crowd that you see uh, at the President Trump rally, right? A lot of people were wearing Trump um, hats and shirts. Um, there was a lot of those kind of don't tread on me flags and, and, and paraphernalia and stuff like that. Um, and, and it was really kind of this group saying, well, we want the ability to return to work. But you're right, right? So even if everything reopened right away, people wouldn't be going back in the same way. And that's something that business owners have to kind of grapple with and, um, and deal with. And the really interesting thing to me is that, okay, so then they showed up two days later, but they did a drive-by protest. So they all stayed in their cars and protested that way. And then just this Saturday, there was another protest. It was even smaller. There were only about 30 people. And so I think that really the pressure was that they weren't getting a good idea of what um, the next steps were for reopening. They didn't know what any kind of um, reopening phase would look like. And that really, um, I think, unsettled people. And so as the governor started talking a little bit more about what reopening looks like, it feels like this started to die down, at least in a little way. It, it tended to be more of the more um, radical people and those that were kind of on the, well, hey, look, uh, you know, only, only 100 people have died, um, although that number is now up to 200. Um, those people have, have seemed to be kind of um, settled by, by the fact that the governor 
uh, has, has released at least uh, benchmarks, even if they are vague, for what reopening will look like. So Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is up for re-election in the fall. He represents Kentucky. I'm wondering how voters feel about his response to the coronavirus, especially because he was the one that said that states that are struggling maybe should just file for bankruptcy, as opposed to the federal government providing coronavirus uh, assistance to them. Yeah, so it's been kind of interesting because he's been, you know, he got hit really early on as they were negotiating the phase two relief package. And he was getting a ton of criticism from the Democrats who were trying to run against him in the Senate race because he went to Louisville and attended a swearing in ceremony for a judge. Uh, and so he instantly kind of switched gears and really kind of took charge of that, that next phase of, of stimulus. And now he's running ads uh, on TV talking about how he acted and, and kind of really highlighting the fact that he's uh, a leader in the Senate and, and has this ability to um, help shape what these relief packages look like. Now, he's kind of, it's really interesting that he suggested that, you know, the state shouldn't be bailed out, uh, in part because, you know, the, those states that have massive pension liability, Kentucky is one of those states that has a massive pension liability. And what we saw with uh, Governor Bashir, he's a Democrat, he won largely because the former governor, Matt Bevin, went after teachers' pension. Uh, and so there's a way that, you know, Senator McConnell's entering really risky territory here in talking about allowing the states to go bankrupt because Kentucky would be really affected by this. There are a lot of state, uh, city, county and, and uh, city governments that are going to really, really struggle to make it. One of my colleagues actually reported on a lot of these eastern Kentucky counties that were so reliant on um, coal taxes that have already seen their, their sources for, for city revenue go down and, and county revenue go down. They're really, really, really being hit hard by this, you know, by all of the, the businesses shutting down for the coronavirus. Right, Daniel. I, you know, it's it's. Do voters feel that it's hypocritical for uh, Senator McConnell, uh, who let's not forget helped uh, pass a giant tax cut for corporations, where essentially they just ended up buying back their own stock to preach fiscal responsibility to states like New York or New Jersey that pay way more in federal uh, taxes uh, than they get back. When you look at the numbers in Kentucky, uh, so I'm looking here from the Rockefeller Institute from 2015 to 2018. Kentucky, which let's remember, as you pointed out, does not pay a lot in federal taxes because it's fairly poor, um, received net transfers from Washington averaging more than $33,000 per person. That's 18.6% of the state's GDP. So do voters feel it's bad form for, and perhaps hypocritical for Senator McConnell, to lecture uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo, for example? I, I think to some extent, people tend to tune out a little bit of the political back and forth, especially right now. I, it's really difficult to tell because, you know, it's not easy to go and, and talk to voters right now <laughs> as everybody's kind of shut into their home. Uh, and when you look at the social media response, there's certainly been a, a massive backlash, right? Like there are people who are, who are mad about how this happened. But at the same time, I think that it's, you know, I think that what I'm watching more is whether or not I guess whether or not this process happens, right? Because if they do, in fact, not bail out uh, cities and counties and, and these local state governments, there will be uh, an effect to that. I mean, our governor said that it would be it would be absolutely devastating if this did not happen for Kentucky. And so the kind of economic fallout that would come from him not doing that, I think, would be the bigger thing to watch because that's what, in the end, would make him more unpopular or more vulnerable. I, I think that people tend not to necessarily... Um, think too much about it. I mean, they think about it, but not think too much about it until it actually hits their pocket. Um, and so that, to me, is, is where I'm watching. I want to see how this progresses, and I want to see where it goes before I can really say, uh, you know, anything kind of definitive about it. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me.